Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, let me open top with YouTube. Just if you have any questions. Awesome. So, well, welcome. We are four only on YouTube, so uh, we can wait more minutes and we can start today is uh, for me is very important because I have been working in this module for one or two months and I think it's pretty good so well what we can do right now is to wait okay we can start this no is it time to start well we are going to review the directional framework that is a framework that we built to make like the execution of the directional strategies much more easier for the users i will introduce the candlesticks module that we created that has candlesticks fields for binance spot and binance perpetuals and also while well, i will show you the position executor that is a component that you only need to initialize it and is going to manage the position until it's closed because it has like an uh, async task the uh, it's a coroutine that is has a while true and it has an event and when the event is set that is terminated uh, is going to 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 be closed that, that that task so well let's start for this i'm going to make a a quick introduction of uh, what we saw about the directional framework and the main idea of the position executor. And then we are going to review two examples of directional strategies. One that is very, so to say, dummy because it's only checking for the RSI, the levels of the RSI. And another one that I would like to explain to you, I hope that is like an, uh, uh, a challenge if, if you can follow the logic that I'm trying to, to build. But I think that is pretty good. And it will give you some ideas of what you can do with combination of indicators and how is my approach to manage multiple indicators and consolidate them in just one indicator. So, well, let's start. So, well, this is a directional framework. The agenda for today, introduction, we are going to review the components uh, well, with uh, as I mentioned, we are going to work on the simple example and in the advanced uh, example. Th those examples are going to be merged in development probably next week, but I have to only work on one single feature that is uh, controlling the margin that you have before adding a new executor. But well, I will I will show you how it works. So. Uh, Based on what we, or probably if you saw the video uh, of the directional framework, this is a triple barrier method. It's a labeling method. Uh, usually, uh, when you are doing machine learning, you have to let you have a label for your each observation. The label is like the like the target variable. So this method that was introduced by Marco Lopez de Prado in this book, what is mainly doing is saying, okay, this is my point of interest of where I'm seeing all the indicators to the back. I have the information of the past for, from this indicator. So instead of defining uh, uh, just a take profit and stop loss, I would define three barriers, a take profit and stop loss and a time limit because my signal is not valid forever. It has a, like an expiry time. Suppose that you are trading with a candles of one minute, uh, probably this, the signal is not valid the next day. Is going to be valid the next 10 minutes or i don't know 15 minutes depending on your strategy so essentially the the labeling method is the saying okay if i start here which is the first barrier that i'm going to touch the vert the vertical barrier the well, he's, he's calling all this horizontal barrier 
uh, they, they take profit or the stop loss if this is a long position. So the new labels are one, zero, and minus one. With these labels, then you can train your machine learning model. But we are not going to approach this with this. Uh, we are not going to do machine learning now. We are using this approach to create the position executor. So our position executor, that is a new component, is going to say, okay, when you say, when you receive a signal and that signal for you is valid to enter in the market, you are going to create a position executor and what you are going to say to the position executor. Okay, this is your time limit, this is your take profit, and this is your stop loss. And obviously, well, if it's a long, a short, the amount, well, all those all that stuff, but essentially that's what you are going to define. So, well, uh, the, the components of the directional framework are the generation of the signal, that for that we are going to use the new component that are the candlesticks, and we are going to use pandas TA, that is a library to, to create technical indicators. And I personally like it a lot because the, the way that you can add indicators is pretty, pretty easy. It's just like, if you have a data frame, it's candles, suppose candles DF is the name of your data frame. You have to add candles DF dot TA dot BB and uh, Bollinger Bands or BB Bands is uh, the name of the indicator. And then the parameters of the events and append equal true and it's going to append that to your data frame. Probably you're going to ask me, hey, why you are not using TA leaves because it's much more faster? Well, I prefer the, the, the syntax of pandas TA. And also if you want to use TA leave, you can use as a backend TA leave of pandas TA. It has like an, uh, uh, an option that is uh, use TA as a backend. Uh, if you have installed a TA leave, you can use that as a backend and you will have the same performance, but with a different syntax. So well, now we are, we are going to review how we can easily add indicators that are very cool. So the storage is going to check uh, every tick for new signals. Also it has like how many executors you can have at the same time in the market. And if you receive a signal, that is valid and you don't have any executor or you have less executors than the ones that you have allowed for the strategy to run, it's going to create a new position executor and store it in one collection that is like active executors. Then we have another list that is for stored executors just for reporting. As you can see here, I can show you one strategy, uh, one strategy that I have running here. Uh, let me change these two uh, okay here are you seeing now the terminal if somebody can reply on the on youtube can be very cool yeah yeah now you can see the terminal so as you can see here this strategy is running right now uh, it's a, one of the simple strategies that i have and here i have the closest executors so that's why I have a collection to store the closed executor just for reporting uh, in the terminal of Hummingbot that I found I found it very useful to see the, the, the state of the variables of the market. So, well, that's essentially uh, why we have these two collections. So let's go back to the presentation. Um, I will need to, okay. So, well, that's essentially how the directional framework works. So let's go and let's check, uh, review some code. Uh, uh, well, there is a question related to the gateway, but uh, if you want, we can answer that at, at the end or probably Mike that is in the chat uh, can answer that because the idea of this uh, live session is to, to check the, 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 the directional framework. So, well, Let's check how a, a simple directional example can be uh, the, um, can be coded. So in this case, we are going to just use the RSI as an indicator. We are going to use the candles of one minute. So we are going to use a new component that we created for Hummingbot. We, we are going to initialize the Binance Perpetual candlesticks in a time frame of one minute. We are going to add the RSI and the rule will, will, will be 
If the RSI is higher than 70, now create a position executor that is going to sell. So it's going to be short. And if the RSI is lower than 30, let's go and buy and create a position executor that is going to buy. So these are like the, the rules that we are going to create. This is like uh, the UI of Ethereum in, in Binance here that we have. So let's see the implementation of the code of, of this. Uh, uh, I know which is a problem. Wait me a second. Uh, I think that I can add now PyCharm here too. Wait. Let me let me know if now you can see PyCharm. Can you see PyCharm? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Now you see Safari, PyCharm. And now let me know if you can see a terminal. Uh, it's pretty easy to use uh, OBS. Uh, okay. Now you should be able to see a terminal. So this is terminal, PyCharm, and Canva. Awesome. Well, now let's go to the code and let's review the simple directional strategy example. So as I mentioned, uh, well, if you use PyCharm, I would recommend you to use this view that was, uh, the, that is for is not longer needed for this strategy. This view that is like the structure view. So here you can see all the methods that you have. And well, it's very useful if you want to inspect the classes and that stuff. So well, essentially, as I mentioned, we are going to have one executor. We're going to have a list of active executors, a list of stored executors. The stop loss is going to be zero point two percent. The tech profit is going to be 0.4%. The time limit is going to be five minutes, but it's in seconds, the input. So we are going, we are multiplying 60 seconds, uh, multiplied by five minutes. And here we are initializing the candles. Check how easy it is to get a new candlestick. Is we have a candles factory, and you're going to say get candle. Then you say, okay, I want the candles from Binance Perpetual. If you want the, Binance, the candles for Binance Spot, you have to just write Binance as the convention that we have for the connectors in the code base. So, uh, and then the trading pair, the interval that we want and how many records we want. This is important because here you are going to define how many candles do you want that that object keep track of? Because it's a combination of WebSocket and REST. The first message is received via WebSocket, and based on the timestamp of that message, is going to collect the, can the historical candles up to 50 in this case. But you can put, I don't know, 500 or 1,000 is the same. Uh, uh, you have to make sure that uh, there is enough historical information. Like, for example, if you are requesting the interval of one week of uh, 1,000 weeks, probably you're going to have an error because it does not exist. So, well, with this, we are going to create the candle object. Then here we are defining the lower and upper bands for the bounds for the RSI. Here we have a flag to set the leverage because we, we want to set the leverage in 10 to, to trade. So we are going to, add when the, the on ticks, we are going to say, hey, did you set the leverage? No, if you didn't set it, set it to 10. And then we are going to change the flag. We're going to define that we want that our orders uh, are 10 USD. 
and the trading pair will be Ethereum USDT and the exchange is Binance Perpetual. And this uh, stuff that is to, to set up the, the CSV path is because I am storing all the entries in a CSV to then make it easier to analyze it. So as you can see in project, here you have data. And uh, for example, this is uh, the file that we have, well, yesterday I was trading and today uh, too. So if I open, for example, this file, ah, oh, well, this is empty because I, I deleted it. This file, uh, it has like a timestamp, exchange, trading pair, side amount, the PNL of the position, close timestamp, entry price, close price, uh, the last status. This is because you can close the position by, uh, by time limit, or you can close the position by take profit or stop loss. So you have the three, the three status, or the position can be expired, uh, but, and it's going to be recorded here. And also you have the stop loss, take profit, and time limit for that position, the order type, and the leverage. I decided to store this information in this script as it is. Uh, as you can see it here, for me, it's very important to have all the information consolidated to then make the dashboards easier. If you have to collect all the trades, then match which trade was related to which entry and all that stuff is much more difficult. With this, you have the position that you want. Which, which, uh, when did you, did you enter in the position? When do you exit the position? And you can analyze each position or each signal independent. So, well, uh, then we are just initializing the markets. So that's like the, 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 the first configuration or the configuration of the scripts because the difference between scripts and strategies is that you can't uh, have a configuration file now for the scripts. Obviously, you can hard code it uh, or you can code a, a, a method that is getting the variables from a file. But right now, all the configuration is in the as class variables. So uh, that's like the, the part of the configuration. Then what we are doing is on the init of this, we are like overriding the, the init of the script strategy base. And after may have, after we init, uh, we are using the, the init of the super, super class. And then we are starting the candles. The candles has this method, method that it's a start that because if not, uh, you cannot use that object to query candles from another file. And the idea is that then you can use uh, the candlesticks components uh, to do whatever you want or query the candles that you want. So this start is here and we are, uh, this, this process that is starting is going to uh, start the WebSocket connection and then collect the information via REST and then update the last candle via WebSocket all the time. Then we have some uh, helper functions uh, methods like get active, active executors, get close to the executors. Then we have the ontic that we are going to review it in a in a in a minute. But uh, let me only show you the the onstop before we go to the the ontic because we add this functionality recently in the code base that that lets you do a custom or uh, stop when you are running the stop command. Before, when you uh, run stop, the stop command was stopping the right oracle, stopping like uh, the strategy, removing the strategy from the children of the clock, a lot of things, but you cannot do something custom. And for example, when you were trading in perpetuals, the, uh, the stop is uh, only removing the orders. So if, if you have an open position, the open position remains in the market. So this on stop, uh, let me, first of all, close the open positions. That is one of the things that I would like to do when I stop this bot. And also it's going to stop the candlesticks. So, well, this is also another feature that you probably are interested in. Uh, and you only have to define this method and this method will be executed when you run the stop command. Well, now let's review the on tick method. The untick has this check and set leverage. This method, let's review it easily, but it's only setting the leverage uh, for, for the trading pair based on the leverage that we have. It's not so important. 
can use, you can set the leverage manually and use that set, that leverage uh, that you are setting manually in the in the UI by what I call it. Then uh, what I'm what I'm checking is getting all the active executors and checking if the quantity of active executors is lower than the max executors that I have available. Uh, that is one variable that we define here. I said, okay, mass executors are time, just one. So if we can create a new executor, we are going to request a signal. So how we are requesting the signal, and this is what we review on the Canva presentation. We are saying, okay, candlesdf is self that the candlesticks that were in this variable and this candlesticks is a class. As you can see, let me show you the class of Binance Perpetual Scandals. It's a class that has a name, well, it has a lot of things, and we are only interested on the data frame of the candlesticks. So to get the data frame of, of the candlesticks, there is a property that is candlesdf. If you write self that the object candles that candlesdf, that is a property that retrieves you the data frame, you are going to get the data frame. So we are storing the data frame in this variable just to manipulate it easier. Then what we are doing is adding the RSI. So the, to add the RSI with TA leave, it's easy as this is data frame with the candle six, we run dot TA dot RSI, the length that we want, in this case, we want 21 periods and append equal true is going to append the new column in the data frame. And the last thing that we are doing is getting this I at is like I lock, but it only get, uh, retrieves you the, the value that you want. So we are accessing the last observation of the last column that is the last RSI that we want. This is, you can access the information as you want. This is how I do it like in one line to make it easier, but well, it's up to you. Just, we are going to review in the advanced example how you can chain indicators because in the advanced example, I was using the RSI and I made an SMA to the RSI and I will show you how to do it. It's very easy. So we are the signal that we are getting is the value of the RSI. So let's back. So for example, uh, in this case that the terminal, let's see a terminal in this case, here in the formal status, I'm doing this uh, to make it much more visual for the, the, the developer or the user that wants to use this and debug why it's working or not. So as you can see, this is the value that we are getting. This is a, the data frame will be up to this column and we are adding the RSI column here. And this last value is a value that we are using to compare and then uh, send uh, create a position or not. So let's go back to the code and let's see now how the, uh, the ONTIC uh, continues. So here we have the signal value. Suppose that the signal value was 50. Okay, it's going to say, if the signal value is higher than the upper bound or is lower than the lower bound, we're going to enter in a position that is going to be this stuff, but in our example, if the signal was 50, we are not going to do anything. But now suppose that the signal is 80. So it's higher than the upper bound. So if the signal is higher to the upper bound, higher than 70 is going to be a short or higher than 30 is going to be a long. And as this is, uh, if you don't, don't understand this, let me know. But essentially, if it's higher than 50, it's going to be short. And if it's lower than 50, it's going to be long because this condition already uh, made me enter if only the values were higher than 70 or lower than 30. So instead of creating another condition, I said, okay, if it's higher than 50, it's because it's higher than 70. Because if not, this condition... Uh, if not, I, I, I cannot be inside this if condition. So essentially what we are, uh, this is to define if it's long or short. So what we are doing here is creating this position executor. This position executor 
is a component that is going to follow the position from the start to the end. And the parameters that the position executor receives are the configuration of the, of the position, that is the subject position config that has the timestamp, the trading pair, the exchange, the order type, the site, the entry price. This is if you want to go limit the amount, the stop loss, take profit and time limit. After you create this position executor, you don't have to do nothing. What the only thing that we are going to do is to append that executor to the optic executors. And that, that executor is going to follow your strategy, uh, uh, your, your position until it, uh, until it's end. And then the last thing that we are doing is cleaning and storing the execution, the executors that essentially we are adding that executor to the, uh, CSV. And then we are adding that to the stored executors and to the, and we are cleaning the active executors. So, well, that's essentially a strategy. This is a formal status. I'm not going to explain you the formal status because for me, it's not worth. If you want, you can check it, but you have, the executor has a method that is to formal status to make this, this report on now that you are, now we are going to enter in a position in real time. So you can see how the executor is using the, the time limit and the take profit and stop loss to see with, where the position is. But well, I call it that, uh, that method to make it easier to, to see the executor. So, well, let's make some trades now. So let's see, uh, okay. Let's move to, can you see Binance now? Okay. Here we don't have any position. We have this executor running, but we are going to stop this bot, uh, to get some fields, we are going to change here in PyCharm, we are going to change the thresholds. So the upper bound, instead of being 30, is going to be 40. And this is going to be 50 or 60. So this can have, probably is going to give me more chances to enter in a position. That is what I want to show you how it works. So let's go back to the terminal. And now let's run again the script. Is a start script, simple direction strategy example. Um, then we have to run status live. And now we can see the values. So where now we are, uh, we are, uh, Memento says you could use the same as the entry condition, right? And that are hard coded by you, maybe. No, yeah, that is a, um, check the code. That value that is, uh, wait, that value that is a, our upper bound and lower bound is uh, the one that we are using to enter in the position here. Uh, it's not hard coded. It's the same of the class variable, uh, to define when, where to enter or not. Uh, but well, now let's see if the RSI comes above 60 to enter in a In the position, let me see. Uh, ah, yeah, you mean about the fifty? Yeah, you, you, I can use it. Uh, I can use it. Uh, but well, at that moment, uh, fifty was like enough to to validate that can be one or another. So, well, but yeah, definitely you can use it. Uh, well, it seems like the RSI don't want to go along, but one important thing that is interesting here is that the last candle is updated like in real time because it's received messages via WebSocket and we are, see that the volume is increasing all the time. This is a trading volume. Also, you have four more columns, but I didn't show them, uh, to make it like to only show the information that, that you want, but if you run the candles example. You will see that you have taker volume, taker uh, buy volume, taker sell volume, and other other indicators too. So well, it seems like we are not getting any fields, but well, let's put this in the background wh while we are explaining the advanced direction. Ah oh, well, let's see. Okay, we have a position. Okay, now as you can see, we have here a position. 
Here we have a bar for the time limit. This bar is going to progress until the end. Here we have some information about the position, the PNL that we have, the stop loss, the take profit. This is a short position, so the take profit is lower than the stop loss, but always the stop loss is at the at the left, so you don't have to understand if the position is short or long. You're going you only know that at the right you are getting profit and at the left you're going to lose. So that's like the, the method two formal status is doing. And is for me is pretty cool. So after this executor finished, uh, we are going to close. Uh, we are going to see the result on the closed executors. So now, if we can compare this with the uh, the Binance UI, we have this short uh, the PNL. Well, the open order. This is a, the take profit order that we have in the market. Uh, well, all this order, all this order was placed by the position executor two, and this position also was placed or opened by the position executor. So, well, one thing that, as I mentioned, is we can let this position finish, or we can close it with a new command. So, if we run the stop command here, and then I'm going to show you the advanced uh, strategy. Let me show the terminal. If I run stop here. This position that is open is going to be closed. So as you can see, it stopped. And now we don't have any order. And we don't have any position too. So, well, uh, that's essentially how it works, uh, like how the simple uh, example works. Now let's do it something much more uh, interesting that will be combining two different, uh, let me show you the presentation. So. Now that it's time to make uh, an advanced example, uh, let me know, please. I, I'm seeing the comments here on, on the left. If you have any questions, let me know uh, in the comments uh, because I would like to explain you this uh, and then maybe it can be useful for your strategies. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. So well, uh, what we are going to do is using two indicators instead of one, we are going to use an SMA of the RSI and the Bollinger Bands. We are also going to use two candlesticks, one minute candles and three minute candles, instead of just one of one minute. And as we are using two indicators that the RSI goes from zero to 100 and the Bollinger Bands, we are not going to use the Bollinger Bands, we are going to use the percentage that you are on the band. So, Usually, it's a value from uh, zero to uh, one, but can have, have outliers. Okay, I have a question. It says, can you use different exchanges for fetching candle data versus? Yeah, uh, LBC. That's one of the good things of making the candles like more uh, modular or creating the candles in a data field is that you can initialize a candles of Binance Spot, a candles of Binance Perpetual, of different trading pairs, and trade in, I don't know, bit, uh, Bitcoin versus uh, USDT. So yeah, it's like, uh, let me show you the code. This part, that is the initial, the creation of the, of the candle, is like, like another component that is running in the script, but the one that you can use to trade is the one that you are initializing here in markets. But yeah, you can trade in DYDX with candlesticks of Binance. Or you can trade in Bitcoin with candlesticks of, well, probably it can be the other side. You can trade in Ethereum with candlesticks of Bitcoin. That can be another, another option. So um, thank you for the question. Let's go back to this example. So we are going to use two candlesticks, one minute candles and three minute candles. And as I mentioned, RSI and, ball, and the percentage of the band of the Bollinger have different uh, scales. So to make it much more like cleaner, we are going to normal, make a normalization of the values. So let's review some examples. If the RSI is zero, it's like you have to buy because 
if the RSI is zero, the is I guess uh, oversold. So you should be uh, you should you should buy. But we are go the the signal that we are going to generate will go between minus one and one. And minus one means short, and one means long. Not exactly one and not exactly minus one because, for example, a zero point o, a zero point uh, eight can mean go short, go long, depending on the threshold that you want to set. So, for example, what I mean by the threshold, if you said my threshold is zero point five, all the signals that the value is higher than zero point five, you are going to enter in a long position, and the same but for short. The, if the short threshold is zero minus zero point five, all the signals that the value is lower than zero minus zero point five, you are going to enter in a short position. So that's why we can move all the indicators to the same scale. We are going to translate how the RSI, the, the scale of the RSI, to the scale of, uh, between minus one and one, and. As we said that a low value of RSI means that we have to go long, a zero will be a one in our scale. A one will be go long. So the RSI of zero will be in our new scale, a one. And the RSI of 100 will be a minus one. So to make that transformation, we are going to, first of all, multiply it by minus one because the indicator is inverted. A high value of RSI means uh, go short and a low value of RSI means go long. So we have to invert the indicator. And as the mid value is 50, we are going to uh, subtract 50 to the RSI and divide it by 50. We're going to do the same with Bollinger Bands. A zero will be a one because zero will be like being here. Uh, and that means that the price is going to go up and a one it means that you have to go short, so it's going to be minus one. So in order to convert that value, we're going to multiply it by minus one and uh, subtract 0 0.5 and divide it by 0 0.5. If it's not clear enough, here I have an example of uh, the indicators uh, of how we can construct the indicators. So we are going to use the same, uh, as we have multiple indicators, and as we have multiple candlesticks, we can make a mix of weights. Because for example, if you think that the RSI is more important than the Bollinger Band, you can apply a higher weight to that value. In this case, we're going to say that the RSI has the same weight of the uh, Bollinger Bands. So we will be 50-50. But we're going to say that the one minute candle has more importance than the three minute candles. So the weight of the one minute candle is going to be 0 0.7 and the weight of the three minute candle is going to be 0 0.3. Now let's review how we can apply this. At first we have the, uh, this, in this example, we have two candlesticks and these are the values that we have for the RSI and for the Bollinger Bands. Uh, this is very, uh, maybe I'm going too deep into math, but well, you can review it, the, the video later on if you want. So suppose that the RSI is 70. We, got, we have to apply our rule. That is minus one, multiply by 70, subtract 50 and divide by 50. So the new value is minus 0 0.4. This is like slightly go short. Yeah, because uh, as we mentioned, a negative value is going to determine that we can go that the, the position that we are uh, trying to go is short, but the value is very low right now. And if we correlate this, the 70 is going to be short too, so well. Suppose that the Bollinger Band is 0 0.9, we make the same calculus and we get that the Bollinger Band, the indicator of the Bollinger Band is minus 0 0.8. So what this means, means that the RSI is saying go short, but I'm not so sure because the value of the signal is 0 0.4. Probably it's a little bit weak uh, now. But the Bollinger Band says, hey, go short, uh, it has a value of 0 0.08. Uh, so it's go short and the signal maybe is strong. 
So here we are going to combine the two signals of the Bollinger Bands and the RSI, and we are going to make the average because, as we mentioned, the weight is 50-50. Yeah? So the consolidated signal for the one-minute candle is minus 0 0.6. That's why, uh, that's uh, how we are going to, how we normalize that value. We can do the same for the three-minute candle because in one time frame, you, are, you can see that uh, the RSI says, hey, you have to buy. But if you go to the other time frame, probably it's going to say, no, you have to sell. So what we want to do is to combine the two signals and see what we really have to do. So in this case, the RSI of the three minute candles is 40. If we make the normalization, the value is 0 0.2, is go long, but the signal is very weak. And the Bollinger, the percentage of the band of the Bollinger band is 0 0.7. So after that, it say go short, but also the signal is weak, is minus 0 0.4. If we make the average, the resulting value for the candle of three minutes is minus 0 0.1. So at this moment, we have the candle of one minute saying go short with a value of 0 0.6 and the candle of three minutes that says go short with 0 0.1, that is very weak. And now we have to consolidate these two time frames in a new signal. And as we said here, the weight of the one minute candle is going to be 0 0.7, and the weight of the three minute candle is going to be 0 0.3. That means that the one minute candle has more power to decide then the next position that the three minute candle. And as the value of the three minute candle is 0 0.6, we're going to multiply that for 0 0.7, and we are going to multiply the value of three minutes for 0 0.3. Why is 0 0.7 and 0 0.3? That's because I, I did it, but you can do with the custom values that you want. The only thing that you have to review is that the sum has to be one. The sum of 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 has to be 1. Suppose that you have another time frame, you can do 0 0.6, 0 0.3, and 0 0.1 and construct a different uh, value. Or you can just say, okay, all the time frames are equally uh, valid and they are all 0 0.5. So, well, this is an explanation of the uh, advanced directional uh, uh, example. Uh, I hope that you don't get so uh, confused with this. Uh, I would strongly recommend you to review the video after this, review the code, and understand why I'm doing uh, this uh, like this. Because for me, it's like the best way to use multiple indicators that has different scales and multiple time frames and unify all in just one single value. Because if not, you have to say, okay, if RSI is higher than 70 and Bollinger Bands is lower than this value, and you have to create a lot of conditions when you can normalize the value and then define a threshold, and then you can move the threshold. Suppose that you have a lot of fake signals with threshold of 0 0.6, you can say, okay, I only want to enter in the market if the signal is higher than 0 0.9 or lower than 0, minus 0 0.9. So you're going to be much more conservative there. So well, now let's review the code. We're going to review the high level because it's a little bit more complex than this one. But essentially, all the, all the methods are the same. The only thing that I am doing here that is probably, uh, wait, that is probably different is that, uh, is that I'm creating a bot profile in, the, in this. I created this object that is about profile. So then it's, a, it's an idea that then you can have different pr bot profiles and say, okay, I want to test this indicator, but this indicator will be tested with this stop loss, this take profit, and this time limit. And then you can map, okay, this indicator with this bot profile that is aggressive. Aggressive means that the, I don't know, the leverage is 50, the take profit is uh, 8% and the stop loss is 2% and you can have a conservative bot. Well, you can have different profiles, but this was the main idea. What I did also, and this is another way to show you how you can customize 
the Hamilton components is to create a new class that inherits the position executor. As you, if you remember, the position executor was the one that was uh, executing the positions in the market. But now I would like to also store the value of the signal. So as I want to store the value of the signal, I make uh, this new class that inherits this uh, position executor. And I also add in this value that is the value of the signal, because then I would like to store the value of the signal in the CSV. So I will say, OK, I enter in this position that was uh, profit, uh, or I lost uh, in this position. But the value of the signal was 0 0.7. And if I found that the values of the signal are very low, I can increase that uh, threshold, probably. So well, I'm here defining the bot profile. Uh, that is the order amount, the long threshold, the leverage. These are the same parameters that I have in this sim in the simple strategy that I showed you before, but they are also all uh, like in one class, in this bot profile class. Then here, what I'm doing is initializing the two candlesticks, the one minute candles and the three minute candles. In Binance Perpetual, in Ethereum, and we, are, we only need 50 records. I would recommend you to don't use a, a lot of records because you should be using only the records that you need to calculate your indicators. Having more records is like not worth. If you only, if the, the RSI that you are using has 21 periods and you are storing 200 periods, it's like, you don't need them. You only need 21 or 22, uh, so well. Then I'm creating this dictionary to store the candles. The same for the flags, the active executors, the stored executors, the same for the path. And well, the init is, is the same. The, ah, oh, sorry, I was showing the, sorry, sorry. Thank you for letting me know, Harsh. Uh, by term, Thank, uh, sorry, I was showing the, the code. But well, this is this was the bot profile that I was showing. These are the candles that I am that I was talking about. That this is the same. I'm using this dictionary to access easier to the candles. And then we have the init that is the same init. The active executors is the same. I have this property that is all candles ready. Uh, the candle object has a property that is is ready. That is going to check if the DQ that has is full. So we use this property to say, OK, we can start getting indicators. So well, the on tick, as you see, is the same. It's checking the leverage. It's checking the maximum executors. This part is exactly the same. The only difference is that before we have the RSI upper bound and the, upper, and the RSI lower bound, and now we have the long threshold and the short threshold that, in this example, is 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5. So that means that every time that that signal is higher than 0 0.5, I'm going to take a long. And every time that the signal is lower than 0 0.5, I'm going to go short. So, uh, uh, well, the only thing that is different here is this, the, the method of how I get in the signals. But as, as you can see, the structure is the same. You can change the indicator. And you can use the same pattern, and you only, you only have to change the get signal method to get the signal that you want. So in this case, the method get signal, I'm going to store the values of the signals because, as we review in the Canva presentation, there are a lot of things that we are going to multiply based on the weights. Uh, well, what I'm doing is I'm looping uh, all over the candles, the candle name, and the this is the candle object. I'm getting the data frame of the candle. I am adding the Bollinger bands, the RSI. And then, as I mentioned, I'm doing an SMA to the RSI. How you can do that? You define the length. And the close is the column that you want to apply that indicator. So in this case, uh, Pandas TA, every time that you are appending a new column, is adding the name of the indicator, capitalize it. Uh, uh, and underscore the length or the parameters of the of the indicator. So this is how we can say, okay, I will I would like to apply a SMA to the RSI. 
So the next thing that, that we are going to do is to get the last row of the candles and we are going to normalize the RSI as we saw in this example of Canva. This is the calculus that we are applying here uh, in the code. We are applying this, cal this calculus here. And then as we assume that the weights are the same, we are going to divide it by two or the other way will be 0 0.5 multiplied by this plus 0 0.5 multiplied by this is exactly the same. And we are going to store the signal value for this candle in this dictionary that then we are going to use to create the composed value. So this for loop is going to fill the value uh, for the first candle, the second candle, and the result will be a dictionary that has two keys, uh, one for Ethereum, one minute, and will be the value of the signal for one minute Ethereum and the value of the signal of the signal for three minutes uh, Ethereum. And here we are composing the signal. We are saying, okay, we want to multiply 0 0.7 multiplied by the value of the signal of one minute and 0 0.3 multiplied by the value of uh, three minute signal. This here is hard coded too. Um, probably you can create a class variable to, to define there the, the weights that you want. But as it's very dynamic, this probably here, you are testing and you want to add another indicator and you want to add another candle. Uh, well, I, I, do, I did it like this because it's like simpler for you to, to change the values. And you are going to, you, you, when you are writing these kind of strategies, my idea was that you only focus on this method that is get signal. So you don't have to modify the values up there. Well, so well, after this, we are doing this method is doing exactly what we saw here in the presentation is computing this value, this value, getting the value of that candle, doing the same for the other candle. And after that is composing the last, the final value uh, with the, the values of the two candles. So uh, then the logic is the same. So we don't have to explain anything else because uh, <laughs> the rest was explained in the simple example. So let's test this strategy now. Let's go to the terminal. Um, okay, let's run start script advanced directional example status live. And now you can see that we have the one minute candle, I only show uh, these columns. Also, you have the column of the RSI, but I am only showing this. And as you can see here, I'm uh, showing the open low high close, the percentage of the band of the Bollinger bands of 21 periods uh, to deviation standards, standard deviations, and uh, the RSI of 21 uh, applied with an SMA of 10. So here are the values. As you can see, the normalized, uh, well, we enter in a position, so let me zoom out. Uh, we have here a position because the value was greater than uh, 0 0.5. This is the consolidated value. But as you can see now, the value is uh, higher to uh, than the thresholds. But as I have an, a position active, uh, it's not going to open another position. So let's review a little bit the former status and we can end this call. So as you can see, this is the percentage of the band of the Bollinger bands. Let's review it on uh, Binance to check uh, what is happening here. As you can see, the bot says, okay, enter in a short position. We like it because it's in the upper bound. So probably this is a good entry if the value goes down now that it touches the, the this the, the the upper bound of the Bollinger bands. So here we are seeing in real time uh, what the bot is doing. Um, and uh, let's review now the format status. Here we have the terminal. So this is the the, the execution of our strategy. The PNL right now is, is zero point nine uh, positive. The Bollinger band is in zero. This is the last value of the Bollinger band. This is the last value of the SMA. But as you can see here, I printed the normalized values of the 
uh, Bollinger Bonds and the SMA. So as you can see, this is negative because this value uh, is uh, positive. So that means that we want to go short. And as you can see, the calculus is okay. And here we have the same value for the RSI. I will have the consolidated value for this candle. So this means that the candlesticks of uh, one minute says that we have to go short with a importance of zero, minus 0 0.6 at this time. And the candlesticks of three minutes uh, is minus 0 0.47, uh, also doing this uh, uh, calculus. And the consolidated value, that is the one that we have on the top, is 0 0.7 multiplied by this value plus 0 0.3 multiplied by this value. So here we have the consolidated signal. I also have it here. Oh, well, I have to remove one of them. Uh, well, that essentially is essentially how it works. And uh, well, I think that is, this status is very informative and it lets you know exactly what is happening in the market. So, well, for me, I find it very, very good to, to work on and, and create some strategies. Also, one thing that uh, if, we, if we review the market now, uh, let's see what is happening. This is the position that we have. As, as we define the strategy, the bot do, did what we expect. As you can see, the RSI was high. The Bollinger Band was high too. The value of the percentage of the Bollinger Band. So it enters in a short, a short position. And is a good, probably can be a good, if, if the entry was here, the RSI, for example, in this example, the RSI was saying nothing happens, but the Bollinger Band was saying, hey, you have to enter. So that's why I think that mixing the indicators, um, applying different weights to them, can be a good thing to create uh, uh, these kind of strategies. So let's review. We are almost, uh, we are very close to the take profit. So probably we can, or we can have an execution. Okay, we finish. So we have the, the live session with a, with a profit. <laughs> so we have here the closed executors and well, the signal value that we use to enter, the signal ID by default is the time sum, the entry price and the cost price and well, the PL. So well, that's all about the directional strategy. I hope that you like it and you can code uh, some custom strategies with that. I will answer the questions of the chat. Uh, do you also plan to introduce native reporting of share radio or oh, we introduce the unstop function pass script to have proper okay the first question is uh, that's one thing that we can do but it's more like open source so if you want to add it feel free to add uh, the indicator by yourself but yeah we can do it i think that uh, the sharp radio or or other risk radios probably are more more a, a better place to do it is to to add them in a dashboard i plan to create a dashboard with the results of the csv so you can easily visualize your entries in a ohlc but yeah probably i can add those in those ratios uh, there the second question was would the introduction of on the unstop function uh, changes to pass script to have proper cancellation of orders or is backwards compatible? Well, uh, to use the unstop, you have to uh, update the your latest development branch because we introduced that change last week. And by default, the unstop is uh, is uh, pass. So the, the behavior after the unstop is pass. It's not doing anything. So if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, want to do anything uh, extra, don't don't reimplement the method. Just uh, don't 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 add it in your script. If you want to do something extra, you have to add the unstop uh, method. The cancellation of the orders is by default in the stop command. So uh, don't worry about the cancellation; it's going to happen. You can worry about the positions. You can worry about I don't know the 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 the, the balance of your inventory. Probably you can put on stop, and when you are stopping the bot, check okay which is my balance. 
Oh, my balance is 80% on Ethereum, 20% on USDT. Okay, I would like to uh, have a balance of 50-50. That's one of the things that you can do on the unstop method. Uh, well, the last question is, in the long run, you want to support backtesting uh, using past data sets. I am asking for the regular strategy scripts and both new directional training module. Well, backtesting in, of directional strategies can be a very easy uh, module that we can build. Um, and probably if the community wants and you want to, um, when someone wants to create an HIV or something like that, we can do it. There are, uh, I think that is very, it's possible. But, uh, well, we don't have that, uh, that project now. The next thing that we want to start working on is the, um, the new endpoints of the, 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 the top exchanges. So we want to support lending on Binance. We want to support uh, Earn, uh, uh, Trigger Orders, well, all that stuff. That is like the next thing in our priority. If you want to reveal uh, what we are going to do and how you can contribute, uh, there is here a technical uh, uh, hummingbot blog that hummingbot. Here you have the technical. Let me search it. You have here the technical roadmap. So one of the things the this is like the priorities. This is one of the that we are going to start working on. That is the functionalities of top exchanges. Uh, we are working on the optimization also. We removed the gateway from the repository. Uh, we removed some strategies and some connectors, uh, but we we have to continue working on this. This is the one that I'm working on and the ones that you can see now that is, uh, well, enable scripts working with Gateway. We are working on that. The directional framework is the one that I'm presenting now. So by the, for one month and a half, we are like uh, accomplishing the, one of the goals uh, for this year. So we have the execution bot, the factor, the signal factory. That is one, the thing that we have uh, that I show you right now. And um, the signals analytics is the the dashboard that I that I that I told you. Also, we have the OHC generators that is part of the signal factory that you can create OHCs and other indicators. Uh, well, make the scripts configurable is another thing. Then we also are supporting orchestration. Uh, so well, that that was merged uh, also in the code base and the last week. Uh, one of the devs that is Kia Panagi and the whole Roger uh, show present this to the community. Uh, so well, that is essentially what we are planning to do this year. And obviously, if we have extra time, uh, we can work on other things. But this is like the priorities uh, to to build because it was like the the collection of things that the people were asking, and well, we did it. So well, that's essentially all uh, I have here. Uh, some uh, feedback. If you want to add some feedback or give me some, uh, uh, okay, it says okay. Yeah, uh, we have a platform that if you want to see it is a snapshot here. Snapshot. You can search for Hummingbot. So here we have three uh, for pull requests. Well. Um, well, now it's how we can merge this connector, the boards of directors. Well, here you have the different votings and you can create an HIP to propose an improvement. You can, well, if you have some code or some connector that you want to add, you can create a PRP. And if it's, uh, if the voting is positive, uh, it's going to be added. So, well, I would like to have some feedback from you. Uh, if you want, you can, uh, I don't know, Carlito, if we have a, a channel for directional trading, but we can create one and we can start talking there. The other thing uh, that I would like to to receive uh, is if you prefer that the indicators are in another module or in the same strategy. Um, 
Uh, well, then which extra features uh, do you want to see? Uh, that's another thing. The, but well, uh, probably one thing that I will do, uh, there are some community members like Memento that probably can replicate uh, the candlesticks and add different more sources of candlesticks. Uh, so, well, I will talk with him later if he's, inter if he's interested on, on that or if he, he wants to improve the, the module. Uh, but, well, this is also, also is not like uh, uh, the, the final version because I built it in one month, uh, one month and a half. Um, probably there are things that we have to, to improve or to fix. But well, I will, uh, my intention was to deliver this product as soon as possible to let you test it. I, I am testing it uh, and it's working as expected. But well, my intention is to deliver products as fast as possible, have feedback from the community, have feedback from people that is testing the, the, the product and then improve it and make other versions too. So, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Memento says so much happening. Is the foundation? No, <laughs> in the foundation we are working. Uh, I'm in the client uh, and Mike is in the gateway. So we are two engineers now. So, well, uh, we are trying to do our best <laughs> this time. But, well, uh, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, we can create a directional channel. I don't know if we have it already. Uh, 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 uh. Strategies. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have it. We can create, uh, or probably we can use a, a, a channel. We can create, Carlito, can you create a channel on research uh, about the directional framework? Um, and we can co uh, continue the conversation there. So, well, I'm going, uh, last thing is I'm going to submit the scripts. Uh, by the end of this week, I have to only work on the on the marching that is available to create a new position, and after that, uh, it's ready to go, and you can test it and, and start trading. So, well, I hope that you like it, and uh, see you next community dev call. Bye bye.